Welcome back to Hannity. Former Marine Staff Sergeant Steve Gurn was working as a private security contractor in Iraq, well, at least until a few days ago, when he was forced to flee the country. Now, he posted a video on Facebook talking about President Trump's temporary travel ban. It got more than 44 million views. Watch this. I'm currently in, in Iraq, which is one of the countries that uh, were on the list. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion about the executive order. Obviously, in the United States, there's lots going on. And uh, over here, there's a lot going on as well. Um, just a lot of things you all don't see. So um, the other morning, uh, we were having a discussion on the executive order. And a lot of the Iraqis obviously showed their, uh, their displeasure in this executive order and uh, why they feel like they've been betrayed by the United States and, and so on. I listened to what they had to say and after, after they were done you know, yelling and screaming about their, their opinion on things, I asked a simple question. And I got an answer to that simple question and I got it without hesitation. My simple question was, as an American, if I went out in town right now, would I be welcome? And uh, they instantly said, absolutely not, you would not be welcome. And I said, okay, so what would happen if I went out of town? And they said, the locals would snatch me up and kill me within an hour. Um, I'd be tortured first, and after they were done torturing me, I'd probably be beheaded. It would, you know, go on video for everybody to see as, you know, an example. The point I'm trying to make is, you know, this is the local populace that would do this. This isn't ISIS, this isn't Al-Qaeda, this isn't the PMU, this isn't a militia from the Iranians or anything like that. This is the local the local populace that would do this. Um, so my question to them was pretty simple then after that. If you would do this to me in your country, why would I let you in my country? Because all this means to me is that if you have the opportunity to take the life of an American, you would do it. So maybe that's something you all need to think about back there. If this is the way some of these cultures feel, this is the way that these countries feel about Americans, why would you be so naive to believe that if they came to the United States, they would do anything any different than what they would do right here in their own country. And joining us now to share his story is Steve Gurn. Steve, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. I know you say these are simple questions that you're asking, but they're really profound questions that clearly hit a nerve. Uh, were you surprised by the 44 million views? Absolutely, I was. Uh, I posted that at 11 o'clock at night, and I went to bed. I uh, got up at 05 the next morning for uh, to get ready for mission. And I was told that uh, it had hit 1.1 million at that time. I didn't think anything of it. I uh, kind of laughed it off, and I, I went out on mission, got my weapons, and uh, came back from mission, put my weapons up, and I uh, was figuring about that time it was around 5 million views. And I was expecting, obviously, uh, a call on the radio to make it to the office. And uh, mm -hmm. I shortly, shortly after got that call. All right. So you really were advised this had gone so viral and people now know what you look like. You were sent home. Is there any chance you get to ever go back? I don't know what the intentions are of uh, the, the company I'm currently working for or employed by. I do know that um, I was removed obviously for safety issues so um, I do not know exactly where where we're gonna go from here all right look I guess the what's so frustrating about this is to me it's a very simple equation we're not saying that you can't come to America we're saying that we need to check you out what really bothers me deep down inside is when all our top intelligence officials are telling us that we that that ISIS will infiltrate the refugee population well ISIS may be evil but that doesn't mean they're stupid. And I got to imagine that they would train people to withstand whatever questioning would come their way. How do you ever positively ascertain what is in somebody's heart 
if they want to come to America, if they want to come here for freedom, or they want to come here to proselytize, or they want to come here to, to hurt Americans and blow up a, a school or a mall or whatever? You, you're really not going to be able to. And, and the, what I have learned over the years of, of working you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan is they're very good at manipulation. They, they can manipulate just about anyone, and they're really good at it. So they can tell you what they, you know, what they want you to hear, and they can keep that up for many, many years. And then eventually when it's time, they'll, they'll do what they believe is right. And if that is yeah. to you know, hurt, hurt an American or, or hurt many of us at one time, they're going to do it. Uh, I think your admonition, um, I know you said these are simple questions, but they're very deep, very profound, and very timely and relevant to the debate that's going on in the country. Sir, glad you got home safe. Thank you for being with us. Congratulations on the 44 million hits. And when we come back...